Okay, this is a, an answer to um, a question from economy versus state. Uh, and the question was, uh, basically, how do I know when to get out? Uh, I have a team of researchers at goldsilver.com that their, their job, their reason for existence is to try and measure where we are in this bull market all the time and uh, to keep us in as long as possible. Uh, now, we're not disclosing everything, so I can't give you the entire answer here because this is one of the benefits that we provide only to our customers. Uh, as we get near the top, there's going to be a private newsletter telling you what we're doing. Uh, but we have a whole bunch of indicators, a basket of indicators. But one of the things that you can look for is uh, the gold-dow ratio or dow-gold ratio. Uh, you want to, you know, in, in 1932, uh, gold, the, the Dow fell to where it, the Dow hit 40.22 points on one day and gold was $20.67 an ounce, meaning it only took about two ounces of gold to buy a share of the Dow. Conversely, if you sold one share of the Dow, you could buy two ounces of gold. Uh, that was the bottom where gold had the highest value against stocks then. Uh, in, then it went into, it, this was coming off of a bubble in 1929 that peaked at 18 ounces of gold. So the, the stock market crashed and so it's just stocks moving, gold is static. Gold is fixed at $20.67 an ounce. Then it goes into a bubble in 1966 of 28 ounces. And uh, the stock market, the Dow, bumped its head on 1,000 points and it kept on, uh, let me see, I should flip the graph so it reads from uh, right, right to, yeah, okay, I did flip it. I try and do this for the audience, but the Dow bumped its head on a thousand points and couldn't break through until 1982, any significant breakthrough. So it was the stock market moving sideways, but gold became free trading in 1971. So again, it's only one of the two components that's moving. Uh, gold is now moving and the will of the public and the free markets bid gold up until it covered a certain portion of the currency supply. You can read about that in my book, Rich Dad's Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver. Uh, and it, it keeps on doing this throughout history. But during that period, gold's value rose, so it took fewer and fewer ounces of gold to buy each share of the Dow. So again, this ratio reverted from 28 down to just one. About four ounces is fair value, four or five ounces, uh, and uh, two ounces was undervalued in 1932. One ounce, the Dow uh, was uh, severely undervalued, and gold severely overvalued at that point. It was in a, in a bubble. Now, I believe we're going into the biggest bubble in history. I am, exp you know, in 1980, there was a day where gold was 800 points and the Dow was, uh, uh, gold was 800 bucks and the Dow was 800 points. Um, this history is repeating again, but now we're coming off of a bubble instead of 18 like 1929 or 28 like 1966, we're coming off of a bubble of 45 ounces required to buy the Dow. There is no time in history that stocks have been as overvalued or gold and, uh, and silver as undervalued as they were back in 1999-2000. Uh, so whenever anything is out of whack from the mean, it tries to revert to the mean and it'll usually overshoot before stabilizing. And the further out of whack it is, the further it's going to overshoot. And I believe that we, we have an upcoming movie, Why Gold and Silver? Uh, and uh, in that movie, it goes into this in much, much more depth. So if you're really interested in all of these questions, most of them get answered in the movie. <clears throat> but um, I do believe that we're going to overshoot further than at any time in history because it was out of whack uh, favoring stocks and, and not favoring gold more than any time in history. So when they revert, gold is going to go into a bigger bubble. Stocks will get more undervalued probably than any, at any time. And that means that there should come a day where uh, the price of gold will be double or more, whatever the points of the Dow is on that day. Um, <clears throat> so you have to watch these things. There's confirming indi indicators that'll tell you, that'll tell us <laughs> when to get out. We have commodities prices going back 800 years. We've got uh, uh, a whole lot, a big basket of indicators that we're looking at and we're trying to improve this all the time. And, and figure out the things to watch for history to repeat, but with all the little twists of us being the biggest debtor nation instead of the largest creditor nation. 
and the uh, retirement of the baby boomers and all the unfunded liabilities and on and on and on. Uh, the last time there was in it, we were in a bull market, that was a Kondratiev summer. This time it's a Kondratiev winter. Just Google Kondratiev wave and uh, you'll find out more on that. Thank you.